that if you are going to, a, if you want to become a general in the military, first you have to go to for training. And that training, you will start running, marching, jumping up and down, climbing. And then that is hardship. So you have to learn that hardship. And when you are through that hardship for a long time, it is only after that when you are qualified to get a rank from the military. So the more you try, the more you struggle, the more you exercise, is the more you increase your ranks and your positions in the military. The same thing applies to fasting. So the more you burn your body and burn your mind, the more you get the goal. If you want to get a goal, you can't get it just like that as it is now. You have to burn a lot of stuff. And you window it, burn it, destroy it. Then you remove all the dirt, all the shelves, all the coverings, and then you will get the main uh, part of it. And from there, then you got the ball. So where is that? Before I tell that, first we have to know the main point of Ramadan or fasting is so that you may fear Allah so that you may, may be dutiful to Allah you may be lawful to Allah you may be obedient to Allah in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying mostly it is in Arabic it is maybe, perhaps, possibly, likely but in the Quran, it's always for sure. But then in this uh, ayah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I prescribe fasting upon you, so that you may fear Allah, it is from us, it's up to us whether we make that upon we fear Allah or, or not. And the conclusion is that not, not everybody Classes, and then finally comes to the position of Tatawana, fearing Allah. Many of us, we fast and we do not reach that level. Why? Because it should come from us. So in order to understand that, we have to know what are the challenges that what restricts us from being fearful, prideful, and uh, uh, love food and uh, to all that to Allah, the Almighty. There is this, the Satan is always against us. And we have one engine, one, bar, one flash of in our body, it's like the engine, and if that engine is corrupted, the entire body is corrupted. So I'm addressing that engine. That engine is Qalb. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in hadith, Ala inna fil jasadi mudkhatun ila saluhat saluhal jasadu kullu wa ila fasadat fasadal jasadu kullu ala wa hiya al-qalb. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh, there is one flesh in the body. If it is corrupted or if they become something bad, then the entire body is corrupted and it is nothing. But if that flesh, small flesh in the body, if it is upright, the good way, then the whole body is straight and correct and clean. So you need to clean that part of the body. That is the color. So we know the center is that, is the Qalb. And Qalb, usually the scientists divide the Qalb into four parts. One of them is that it's called Qalb Musafah, and Qalb Murafah, and Qalb Afal, or Qalb Ajr. Qalb Musafah is the heart that is just bling. 
it's blame that you can use it the way that you want. And that one is one side. The other one is Qalb Munafa, which is opposite to that. It's the heart that has two opposing things together at the same time. That heart is devil action. He used devil faces, so he's a bigot. That is Munafa, it's one uh, heart which is the worst. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna al-munafiqina fi dhikti al-asqal wa al-na'ar. Indeed, the hypocrites will end up to the lowest, to the, to, to the most, the cyst, the cyst to the most tender part of the hellfire. The third part of the qalb is the qalb alpha, uh, uh, the one which is locked. It's someone that you keep telling them to do something good, but they don't even hear what you are saying because their heart is locked. And if they even hear, they will never apply. So those hearts are locked. The other part of the fourth part of the heart is the one which is ajra. It is free from evil deeds, from bad things. It is clean. So that part of the uh, that heart is so clean. And that is the heart of the mu'minin, the believers. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us, give us this part of the heart, the fourth one, which is the basic. That is the one we are struggling to get. If we miss that, then we always will have a challenge with our lives because Satan comes to us frequently, very quickly, and tries to envelop influence us. So in your soul, your soul is not always free from uh, uh, getting to a straight. Even Prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet uh, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. Allah is mentioning the Quran that he says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَارَةٌ بِالسُّورِ So he says, I do not absorb my soul from evil inc incitement. So I'm, I cannot tell you that my soul is free from evil influence. Inna amaratun soul. Indeed, the soul is the one that always makes, uh, tries to inject, to start something which is wrong, like evil doings, conspiracy, and so on and so on. But the problem is the one who obeys that. Because the whole point of fasting is taqwa, fearing Allah. And what is taqwa is that you obey Allah the one who created you and you are not to disobey Allah. That means you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, follow his instructions and his guide, guidelines and take his commandments and not to disobey him. But to disobey the Satan and not obey the Satan. That is the whole point. So if you just follow your desires, your vain desires, you just follow them, that means you are not obeying Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah says the Almighty, Don't you see? Or what about the one who makes his vain desires as his God? That means he obeys whatever his evil desires tells him or her, they just accept. That means they make them Allah, they, they consider them as God. And then Allah says, And Allah then let him go into the astray path, while he knows even that he is in the wrong path. 
وختم على قلبي and then Allah is sealing and locked his heart وسمعي عن his hearing وجعل على بصري غشاوة and he covered his eyes and his eyes so he cannot see the truth is right there in front of him but he or she cannot see and cannot understand because he is the part that we said is over قلب that rocks heart so that is more part than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the opposite says وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ The one who uh, makes the, uh, the Sha'ar of Allah, the signs, the laws, and assemblies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes it high and he protects it well. That one is the one who, is, who will be successful because he has a taqwa. And that taqwa, Allah is saying, فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Because that is the taqwa, the fear of Allah, which is coming from deep heart. It is that one. So the taqwa comes from the deep heart, and the opposite comes from the deep heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَإِنَّهُ آثِمُهُ قَلْبُهُ That one, because he got athim, he became sinner, he, got, he fell into sin, and he committed crime, which is from deep heart, in his heart. So his heart sinned and, and committed the sin, the crimes, and then it is spread to the rest of the body. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. My dear respectful brothers and sisters, this Ramadan is a college training college. It's a training center. It's a school. But what about if you are in that school throughout the month, but when you finish it, then still you do not obtain any award, no certificate, nothing. And you cannot put it into application at all. So what is the benefit there? So you lost everything. This simplest thing that we can take an example is that you are in driving school, so you one month you were in that training, driving school, and you were taught how to stop, how to st uh, uh, stop from the light, is how to turn right, how to turn left, and so on. So everything you were, because you have been through that training for the entire month. But then when it's done, even if you got the license, immediately you took the car and crashed it somewhere. So who are you? And that is where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said one time when he was he was descending from the stairs and he said, I mean, and he's another when he was descending again, he said, I mean, I mean three times. Then the companion asked him, Oh Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you were alone just on uh, 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 these stairs and you keep saying, I mean, I mean. Who are you talking to? So he said, is that Anjur Jibril said to him three groups of people. The one who got his parents who are seniors old and he did not, because of serving them, he didn't get to paradise because he neglected them. That one, let him let him go into the Jannah, into the hellfire, deeper and deeper. Then I said, I mean, he said. And then the second one, he said, one, that he witnessed the month of Ramadan. He was there at present when the month of Ramadan was there, but he did not enter the paradise because of that fasting and that month, what he gained from that, that month of Ramadan. Let him go to hellfire, and go give and give it to it. May Allah put it, give it to it. Then I said, I mean. So who is that? 
God is not the only the one who was present in the month of Ramadan but never fasted. Not only that. The worst is the one who pretended that he was fasting, but he did not fast actually. It is that he was making fun of the fasting because he didn't put it into the right way. He didn't train his himself. And then he did not benefit from he did not gain benefits from that Ramadan which can keep him on this trade until the next Ramadan. And when the next Ramadan comes, it is that he may be uh, going down and down. So then the other Ramadan comes and boosts him up. That gives him and uh, it always it, it activates it reactivates him and re-energizes him. It is only that you need to always to recharge your battery, the spiritual battery, you are recharging. So every month you are recharging. But it is, if it is already dead, then how can you recharge it? Your cell phone, if the battery dies and it's completely gone, how long is it going to take you to charge it? But when you have something, you can recharge it and then put it in close work. That is where, where Allah, the Prophet Muhammad says in another hadith, this hadith is long, says, Man sama iman wa ihtisam, ghufir Allah. So that one, and the person who is who fasts with, um, with full faith, full belief in him, and ihtisam, that is expecting good, that one Allah forgives his sins. So then there are the two, you see they are the opposite. And the center is the heart. So the heart, and let, and let me give you another example about the heart. The heart is this position, is the headquarter of the whole body. So that headquarter gives its order and receives feedback. Then the whole system works in this way, which is commandments coming in, in, coming in one way, which is from top to down. And another way from bottom to up. Let me explain that. From bottom to up is that, for example, when you are hungry, you are suffering. And your body, your, your belly tells, sends a signal to the heart and the mind and tells them, I need food. I'm hungry. So then the heart is talking to our body, the feedbacks to reject, say negative. Your application is rejected. No, it is. We are fasting. So hold on, you have to be patient. And again it sends. It says no, be patient. It's yet. The sun is still there. Just wait until the sun sets. So that goes on back, like feedback, the argument comes up and down. That is training for your body. You are training your stomach, you are training your mind, you are training your body all. Your eyes tell you, let me look at this thing, it's beautiful. And then the heart says, no, you are fasting, hold on. So it is that training. It is the same training of when you are driving and the, the, the one who is teaching you the driving says to you, no, don't go, stop, like that. You are in that system. That is the real training. That's how fasting is the train, real training. But that training, you have to use it for the next month, for, uh, for the rest of your life. It's not only that you take it in the month and then it's gone. And that system, you become is, you are not Abdul Rabbi, but you become Abdul Ramadan. You become the slave for the Ramadan. You, you worship the month of Ramadan and you do not worship the Allah, the one who created you, the Lord. And all that is uh, we need them, brothers and sisters, to train ourselves. The other way of that, the, the heart sometimes it gives order to the body. So how it does it give? It tells like in the month of Ramadan, it gives an order to say, listen, you have to fast, that's one. Again, it says in the night of Ramadan, you need to stand for Qiyam al to Tahajjud, pray Tahajjud. 
So that order comes from the station, the headquarter, that is the heart. The other one which is complaining comes from the body. So in both ways, the decision maker is the heart. So that heart, which is the decision maker, that's where we want to train. And that training, always what you are using is patience. You must be patient. That is the whole point. And now I, I want to say the last. Please, dear brothers and sisters, let us abstain from all irrelevant talks from this Ramadan. Let us conclude. Let us cut off the other things. Let us cut off anything which doesn't benefit to us. Be it food, be it the activities we do. Let me give you an example. The smoking is so pathetic that a Muslim person who should be economizing uh, his income, who should be and uh, always going to the right way, is smoking. So this is the time you should stop smoking quickly. That's just an example, but there are many other things that we do, and this is the time we take the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and quit any bad behavior. Being in the business, being in the, uh, the human and social interaction and everything. Let us clear ourselves from this Ramadan onward and then continue like that and not to stop and keep remembering whenever we feel and down then we feel that we can still come back to us.